Live from the Scripps Studios, this is 10 News. 10 News uncovering new information tonight about a plane crash that killed three Americans fighting the horrific fires in Australia. One of them had lived here in San Diego. Good evening, I'm Kimberly Hunt. And I'm Steve Atkinson. That C-130 they were in was also here recently. Our tennis reporter Matt Boone joins us in the newsroom with what we know about the men on that plane. Matt. Steve, Kimberly, we don't know a ton yet. The press release was just sent out this evening detailing some information about the three men that were killed in that plane crash in Australia. This coming from the company that they worked for based out of Canada that says they do not know quite yet the reason behind it when that plane went down fighting those fires. Paul Hudson served 20 years in the Marine Corps in various roles, including a C-130 pilot. He was living in Arizona with his family, but records show he also lived in San Diego, though the Navy has not told us where he'd been stationed. Hudson had been sent to Australia by his company, Colson Aviation, which provides firefighting services around the world. He was operating a C-130 alongside Ian McBeth from Montana and Rick DeMorgan from Florida when it crashed over the mountains in New South Wales. That same plane had been in Ramona last August. Cal Fire is slated to get its own C-130 next year, so they brought in the company Colson to train with. The pilots with Colson are, are uh, bar none, and they really, um, they really were a huge resource to us. Cal Fire's Thomas Shute says news of the crash reverberated quickly in the firefighting community. Whether it's out in Australia or here in California, it, it really hits home. Australian authorities have not yet released a cause of the crash, but mentioned there was a large fireball when the plane went down. More than 30 people have now died from the fires since September, which have scorched more than 25.7 million acres. And to give you some perspective on the conditions right now, this is a graphic that was just tweeted out by the firefighting department in New South Wales showing 73 active bush and grass fires right now. None of these, though, at emergency uh, situations, though they're obviously actively monitoring them, and they do expect that the conditions, at least in that region of Australia, are expected to ease in and cool in the next day or so. In the Live Center, Matt Boone, 10 News. Matt, thank you. We have been sending 10 News viewers the latest breaking news on this story through the 10 News app. It is free. Just search for 10 News in your app store. New details about this fiery crash that took the lives of two teenage boys. It happened in Mission Valley last weekend, and today the teenage driver was in court facing charges of manslaughter and DUI. 10 News anchor Lindsay Pena is live in Mission Valley, and Lindsay tracked down a witness who tried to save the lives of the boys who died in the burning wreck. Lindsay. Yeah, that's right, Kim and Steve. That driver says that this all happened just so quickly. Even though he and first responders showed up just seconds after it happened, there was little that could be done for those two young boys. Just looking at the wreckage of the BMW, five teens were riding in early Saturday morning. You can tell this was a bad crash. They went by me fast enough that it shook my car. Seconds later, Michael Crow saw the car lose control on the transition from the westbound 8 to the 163 South. They uh, hit the guardrail, sparks flew everywhere, car went up the side of the concrete for a little while before it went over the guardrail to the, to the ground. Crow stopped and ran to try to help the teens, but when he got closer, he could see there wasn't much he could do. Three had managed to crawl out, but two others were trapped and a fire had ignited, small at first, but growing quickly. I told him that uh, just to hang on, the help was on its way. Unfortunately, the two teens inside, David Chavez and Gustavo Beltran, both 15, didn't make it. Investigators say the 17-year-old driver didn't have a license and was driving under the influence of alcohol or drugs. It wasn't easy to watch. I mean, there was just nothing you could do for the young man. That driver was arrested and is still in the hospital, but was arraigned today. He's facing felony vehicular manslaughter and DUI charges. Because he's a juvenile, his name hasn't been released. Now that teen driver has another court date set for February 26th. Reporting live in Mission Valley, Lindsay Pena, 10 News. Lindsay, thank you. Police are reminding people to pay attention to those walking signals after an 86-year-old man was killed while crossing the street. Now, the crash happened on Mira Mesa Boulevard and Anderman Avenue just before 7 o'clock tonight. Police say the man was using a crosswalk but against a red light when he was hit by a woman driving a Lexus sedan. 
The man died right there at the scene. Police say the driver did stay to work with investigators. Drugs nor alcohol were not suspected. An autopsy is shedding new light on the death of a San Diego State student who fell out of his bunk bed. In November, Dylan Hernandez fell from the top bunk after a night of drinking at a fraternity party. The report says the 19-year-old suffered blunt force trauma to the head, including a fracture at the base of his skull and bleeding in the brain. The autopsy also found alcohol and THC in Hernandez's system. The list of charges against a La Mesa store owner has grown after getting into a fight with the media. Mother really? That's what I say. You. Cut it off. Hey. Stop it. Peter Cars has got into that scuffle Monday when reporters were there to ask questions about allegations of another crime. Today, the DA charged him with felony vandalism and misdemeanor counts of battery for that violent clash, as well as a previous loot act in public. Garzis has since been released. He's due back in court next month. A man accused of brutally murdering his girlfriend is headed to trial. A judge ordered us to blur Henry Cohen's face. He is accused of strangling and beating Sabrina Lukowski to death back in October. Her decomposing body was found in the Encinitas home the couple shared. Lukowski was a well-known butterfly breeder in the North County. Cohen faces 55 years to life in prison. China is expanding a travel lockdown in the central part of the country. 22 million people are now barred from leaving the area. China is trying to contain the deadly coronavirus, taking hospitals by storm. The rapid spread is fueling fears of a pandemic, especially with the Lunar New Year celebration starting Saturday. It is the busiest travel season in China right now. At least 25 people have died and another 830 new cases of that disease have been confirmed in China and six other countries. Within the last few hours, House Democrats wrapped up their second day of arguments why they believe President Donald Trump needs to be removed from office. Today, they wove together their evidence that the president violated the Constitution. They even played this video of one of Trump's allies, Senator Lindsey Graham. It comes from the Clinton impeachment trial in 1998 doesn't even have to be a crime. It's just when you start using your office and you're acting in a way that hurts people, you've committed a high crime. Well, the president's defense team struck back, saying the president has not committed a crime. His lawyers are expected to lay out their case starting on Saturday. Now to a developing story and one of the most contentious measures voters will face in March. Del Mar residents will decide if a luxury resort will be built on the bluffs near Dogs Beach. Denver's reporter Anthony Pura is in Del Mar, where supporters and opponents came together for one of the last times before the ballots are sent to voters. Dozens of people packed a forum on Measure G tonight. Those in favor of the resort say that it comes with so many community benefits. Those against it worry that it will impact the quality of life here. Hi, Scott. We actually, um, we already spoke here. with the city of Del Mar. Actor Scott Eastwood brought even more attention to Measure G when supporters of the ballot measure recorded him taking down their signs. Thursday night, both sides made their case for and against a proposed luxury resort called Marisol to be built on this undeveloped land on Camino Del Mar. The proposal is an alternative to an approved plan to build gated estates on the bluffs. The development is highlighted by a 65-room hotel and 31 villas. It also has dining options, cocktail lounges, and public access to the beach. Karen Powell supports the project. I would go up there a lot. I would probably walk down there with my dog, and I probably would, um, uh, you know, have a sunset cocktail or meet my friends there. Supporters say it would also pump nearly $6 million into the city each year. It's a win-win for everyone. Opponents of G worry that if the measure passes, the city would have no oversight over the development. But supporters say they would still be bound by the normal review process. Nicole O'Neill is skeptical and plans to vote against it. My feeling is, why do they go through the initiative? It's a great project, potentially a great project. Why don't we just go through the normal way we always do? Opponents also say the development is too big, raising environmental and traffic concerns. The development would also impact neighboring Solana Beach, and O'Neill says she worries what people there think. There are neighbors and there are partners in a lot of things, and we shouldn't just blow them up. In Del Mar, Anthony Pura, 10 News.
All right, some of the biggest golf stars in the world had good days in round one of the Farmers Insurance Open at Torrey Pines, and that includes that guy, Tiger Woods. 10 News Sports Director Ben Higgins joining us tonight. About 3,000 fans followed Tiger today. They may have gotten a glimpse of golf history. It is possible, yeah. If Tiger goes on to win the tournament, it'll be his 83rd career PGA Tour victory, setting a new all-time record. And despite a slow start, Woods is very much in contention. You can't win the Farmers Insurance Open on day one, but you can lose it. And when Tiger was one over par through three holes on the easier north course, it could have spelled trouble. Instead, Woods recovered to get back to even par and then made three birdies on his back nine to shoot a three under 69 that has him just three shots off the lead heading into his second round on the tougher south course. Now, other than Tiger, one of the biggest stories of the first round was the weather. Absolutely perfect until around 2.30 when a dense bank of fog quickly blanketed Torrey Pines. There was concern that play might have to be halted, but the fog lifted enough for everyone to finish. As for Tiger, he still has a long way to go this weekend to get career win number 83, but ultimately would seem fairly satisfied with where he stands after 18 holes. Starting out, you know, I made a quick bogey there and early and uh, I felt like I, I fought back and uh, there's a, a lot of positives hit in, in the south course. Woods will start his round a little later tomorrow, teeing off on the first hole of the south course at 1040 in the morning. We'll look at how some of the other notable names fared today ahead in sports. I'm Ben Higgins, 10 News.